In this video, we're actually going to derive the transformation matrix P, which actually forms our GLS estimators, which actually happen to be blue. So remember what we did is we took our original model and we multiplied both sides by this as yet unknown transformation matrix P. And the idea being that if we look at our transformed error, so our P times U, we require that the transformed error P U given X should be homoscedastic. So in other words, it should be equal to sigma squared times the identity matrix I. And in requiring that this is the case, we actually came up with an expression for the identity matrix in terms of the transformation matrix P. So we had that I was equal to P times omega, our sort of variance covariance matrix, times the transpose of P. And we're going to use this expression to help us to derive a form of the explicit form, rather, of the transformation matrix P. OK, so if I take this expression and I multiply both sides by the inverse of P, we have that P inverse times the identity matrix, which is just P inverse, is equal to P inverse times P times omega times P transpose. And notice here that we have P times, or the inverse of P times P, which is just going to yield the identity matrix, which when we multiply it by omega, is just going to be equal to omega times P primed. Okay, so we've got rid of this first sort of P here in our expression. Now we want to get rid of the second P on the right hand side, or the second P transpose on the right hand side. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take both sides and we're going to multiply them by the inverse of P transposed. So that's P transpose inverted is equal to omega times P transposed times P transpose inverted. So notice again here we've got a matrix times its inverse, which is just going to be the identity matrix, which when we multiply it by omega is just going to be equal to omega. So now we have an expression for omega in terms of P and P transposed, all sort of inverted. And we can actually represent this a little bit simpler by saying that omega is just equal to P transposed times P all to the power minus one, because when you take the inverse of a product, the order of multiplication reverses. Okay, so we've got omega in terms of P, but what we would actually like is P in terms of omega. So how are we actually going to get this from this expression? Well, the way in which we're going to get that is just by assuming that our transformation matrix P is actually a symmetric matrix. So that means that P is equal to P transposed. And if we assume that, that implies that omega is just going to be equal to, well, we, in our bracket now, we're just going to have P times P, which is just P squared, all to the power minus one, which is just going to be P to the power minus two. And then we can easily get a form for P in terms of omega. P then is just equal to omega to the power minus a half. OK, so this is the explicit form of our transformation matrix. It's just the sort of covariance covariance matrix omega to the power minus a half. Let's check that it works. So to check that it works, we're going to require that the variance of P times U given X is equal to sigma squared times I. So let's evaluate it for this explicit case where P is equal to the variance covariance matrix to the power minus a half. So then we have the variance of P times U, well P here is just omega to the power minus a half times, in this case, U, given X is just going to be equal to using our sort of favorite formula. That's going to be omega to the power minus a half times the variance of U given X, which we know is just omega times sigma squared, so we're going to have a sigma squared out the front, and then times omega to the power minus a half all transpose, which we know that omega to the power minus a half is actually going to be a exactly the same thing as omega to the power minus a half all transpose. So we've got now we've got omega to the power minus a half times omega to the one times omega to the power minus a half, which means that we're just going to have sigma squared times omega to the power zero which is just going to be sigma squared times the identity matrix. So our transform system actually has the nice property that our errors are homoscedastic. Hence, we can estimate OLS on our transform system, and those estimators will be blue.
In the next video, we're going to actually derive the explicit form of GLS estimators, and we're also going to start to derive the variance of GLS estimators.